All right, the purpose of this video is to walk you through how to set up your Mobile 6 and how to convert it from a whoop to a toothpick. Let's go. All right, so now we're gonna get this guy set up in Betaflight. I'm gonna connect it actually to my Radio Master TX16S. I forgot I got this new ELRS radio. Um, I usually like flying my whoops um, on my Zorro, but uh, I'm gonna fly this thing mostly as a toothpick. I just really like the long sticks of this 16S. And actually you can see I've upgraded my sticks here. So I'm gonna bind it to this guy. I'm gonna walk you through it. So we're gonna connect to Betaflight first. All right, so grab the quad, plug it in with a micro USB cable. You'll see the little LEDs start to light up. Uh, you'll hear that tone on your computer. There we go, and connect. Uh, if it doesn't work, uh, make sure that you have a good cable. I think this one is starting to go on me, so it's getting a little finicky, uh, but that is probably the number one failure with these things is bad cable, actually. Also try different ports on your computer if you're having issues. All right, so let's go ahead and connect. All right, I had to get a new cable. That one was no good. This one seems to be working. Uh, the first thing you wanna check in the setup is that the quad performs uh, the way that it should. When you roll it, it should roll the proper way. This one is ports. We've got uh, smart audio set up on UR2, that's good. Our config, the only thing you really need to look for here, um, you know, there are a handful of things actually, right? Let's uh, check the uh, craft name. I'm gonna leave it Mobile 6, I like that. Uh, that is what the drone is. Uh, sometimes I'll change this to say half grown, but not today. Um, I like the uh, D-Shot beacon config to be on. That means I can make it beep if I crash, super important. And then air mode. I actually turn air mode off uh, if I'm flying whoop indoors. You can actually set that to a switch. Let's do that. Um, otherwise I like air mode on when it's in acro mode. If it's not in acro mode, you don't want air mode on. Otherwise it gets a little wonky if you're bouncing off of things. So let's save and reboot there. We're gonna all right, and automatically reconnected. Uh, let's look at a couple of different things. Uh, receiver is actually where we need to do the heavy lifting here. So I've got my remote here. Let's get this thing working. All right, I already have a model set up on this radio. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go into uh, the model, right? You can see uh, just a couple of things that you need to double check. And this is a ELRS, so I have it on Crossfire. So we're good there. We're gonna hit the Sys key. Now, there are a few different ways you can bind in ELRS. I'm gonna show you the way that's kind of pretty similar to binding with FR Sky. So hit the Sys key. I'm gonna go down to Express LRS. That's Express LRS 2.0. That's what this has. And it's gonna kind of connect through things there. And I'm gonna scroll down to where it says bind. Now, I'm gonna go over here in my beta flight and see where it says bind receiver. I'm gonna click bind receiver. So I'm gonna click bind here. I'm gonna click bind here. I'm gonna let them do their thing. Looks like we are connected, but you can see that it's not behaving properly. It's all spinning and rolling and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, that's because my channel map is wrong. That's actually pretty common. I'm gonna go ahead and and make it uh, FR Sky, A E T R, one, two, three, four. Click save, boom, it stopped moving, right? So now we can see that this is operating the way that it should. Now I'm gonna also check my aux channel. So I got aux one, two, nope. All right, so my aux channels are a little bit different on this radio. So um, SA is aux six, three, two, and one and seven it's odd so i may have to do some work with this radio to get it the way i want uh, but uh, we'll do that in a minute might do some of these other ones work as well we've got these are all set up in goofy position so i'm going to fix that inside the radio um, let's go ahead and do that now okay now i wanted to arm on aux one that's absolute that's an absolute must for your ELRS quads. Uh, angle mode is aux two, um, and I and I do want that there, just just how it is. So when it's in the up position, it's angle. I flip down, it tells me that I'm going into angle or acro. Uh, flip over after crash. That's my aux three and my aux four. I want it to beep. 
There's my beeper. Let's add a beeper, 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 beeper. Here we go. Add range, aux four, and click save. That allows me to flip it. I'm sorry. That allows me to make it beep so that I know what I'm doing. And actually, I like my beeper on aux three and my flip over after crash on aux four. That's just a personal preference thing. Um, I just kind of set all my quads up the same way. Click save. OSD. All right, average started battery cell voltage. We got a ton of stuff on here. Uh, core temperature, let's take that off. Current draw, battery current draw, I don't need that. Um, craft name, sure. Disarm, sure. Fly mode. No, we don't need fly mode. Um, RSSI DVM value. Nope, I'm gonna go with link quality throttle position, just muddying up the screen. Timers are good. VTX channel, I don't need that. And warnings, absolutely. All right, I like to put my timer in the upper right hand, upper right hand corner. Link quality below that. You know what I do like is the crosshairs. Okay, let's click save. Now, let's fly. Okay, tips before you build this guy. One, make sure you have a good solid space with a place to put all of your parts. That's super helpful too. Um, you can use this tiny little screwdriver. I did, but if you have a nicer one, make sure you find it. When it comes to space, I like to have a little magnetic place to put my screws. I'll show you uh, that I use one of those as well. Um, other things you're gonna wanna keep in mind. Now my canopy does not, my second canopy uh, didn't have the uh, bracket to hold in the camera. So you're gonna wanna check uh, that. So I had to drill a hole in the back of this. Uh, other things to keep in mind, um, you're gonna wanna make sure you put the screws in from the bottom right? Uh, that'll just allow you uh, to put your battery on here a little bit easier. And uh, I had to drill a hole here to get this canopy to work. Now, also make sure you don't put the camera in upside down. Uh, you'll see the wires here are in the lower uh, right hand corner, right? When you're looking at it this way, like I am now, right? Lower left for you guys right now. Um, so yeah, fun little ripper. Build this, do it. Unless you're into whoop racing, then leave this guy's little whoop. Let's go. All right, now I'm gonna walk through how to convert my Mo Beetle 6 to a toothpick. Yeah, I've got all of the things that I need inside this little baggie. So let's convert from a whoop to a little toothpick. Okay, so everything you need is gonna be in this little baggie. You can see I have this little mat here. Um, I really like using it. It has some built-in magnets to hold my screws and whatnot. I'm gonna leave the same canopy so I don't need that. Um, I probably don't need these extra little bits. I will need this rubber band, right? I do uh, need a rubber band in order for it to uh, hold my battery. And I'm gonna go ahead and use this little screwdriver that I have. So I need one, two, three. I have three screws there. And I have three screws on each motor. Looks like I have a, a fourth screw there. So I'm gonna start by, um, Ooh, and we are wired. I thought we would be plugged, but we're not. We're wired, uh, wired motors, so that's cool. I'm gonna start by taking off the motors. Three screws per motor. And make sure you have a place to put these screws. You don't wanna lose them. Now they do give you some extra screws and bits and pieces, but it's nice to not have to uh, dip into some of that. Now you could use a better screwdriver than the one they give you, um, but it does just fine as you can see. That screw is a little loose, probably should tighten that before I flew this guy as a whoop. Uh, but it's life as a whoop is short lived because this guy is gonna be my backyard toothpick. Uh, that's what I really like toothpicks for is just the ability to fly them outside in small areas, right? Like backyards, right? I'm not gonna fly my five inch in my backyard you know, I don't live on five acres or anything like that. I just have a normal residential backyard. I'm in a little pond behind it. So I get a little bit of extra space if I fly over the pond. Yeah, I don't mind flying over the pond. Some people, you know, that's not in your comfort zone. And I totally get that. 
Now, I do really like this guy um, as a whoop. It is super fast, uh, super powerful, uh, super nimble, super agile. So if I was ever to get into whoop racing for real, um, this might be a good place to start. It's just so light, uh, you know, it just does a lot of things really well. You know, I can't speak to the uh, durability of uh, this frame, but you know, it's a, a decent frame so far. Uh, I've heard good things about it, uh, so that's okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of push these motors. I'm not bothering to take the props off. I'm gonna push the motors through uh, the frame there so that I can kind of pull it off. All right, now I've got three screws on the top. Now if I want to, I can actually adjust the camera angle here by moving this screw higher, right? And then I'll just pull this back a little bit more, but that is not something I want to do. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it like it currently is. Now this process actually would work with pretty much most, <laughs> most toothpick uh, conversions, right? So if you've got a whoop, and you've got a frame that'll work for you, you can pretty much just do the same process. Uh, now this Mobile light is nice because it's kind of built to do this. Um, they even built a frame for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out. All right, now I'm gonna be careful, kind of push the motors through. I could pull the props off. That would have probably made my life a little bit easier. I'm gonna go ahead and suggest you do that. Otherwise I'm messing, playing with fate, uh, making sure I don't uh, pull a wire motor off, motor wire off. All right, we've cleared the frame. All right, let's set that, set the frame off to the side and let's take a look at what we have here. We've got some extra bits and pieces. We've got some long screws, some extra grommets, all right, let's take a look here. Um, now the reassembly can be a little tricky if you don't pay attention to a couple of different things. One, uh, make sure that you match the shape of the flight controller uh, to the frame, right? We've got that flat part in the front and then that triangle match those there. Then you're gonna take the three long bolts, um, put the Phillips head at the bottom, uh, so that the screw is facing up, goes through the gummy, um, and then put those little plastic nuts on the top. So you're gonna have a little tiny bit of uh, the bolt uh, hanging through on the top. You're gonna kind of use that to actually help hold down your, um, your rubber band for your battery. Uh, then go ahead and attach the motors. Uh, just kind of be careful to make sure you line them up correctly. You know, there are three screws per motor. Um, you know, so it's it's fairly self-explanatory, right? Match the shape, uh, put your three long bolts in from the bottom, uh, nut on the top, and uh, you'll be good to go. Uh, then we're gonna talk about the canopy because that's uh, kind of a little bit trickier than you might think. Okay, so to really reattach this properly, um, I'm gonna have to drill a hole to get this through. Um, I've got a a 1 16th inch drill bit uh, that will work. Uh, or if you didn't really want to bother with drilling, you could have just added this canopy and swapped this out. But I kind of like this piece, it saves some weight. So let's go ahead and drill right here in this highest spot. Okay, so it was a challenge to get this, um, was a challenge to get this canopy on in here, right? I had to drill that hole. I'm not super thrilled about that. Um, I was gonna go with this canopy here, but I don't have the brackets to hold this camera in place. So that's a no go. Um, so it's a little bit janky um, to get it working, but it'll fly. Get the screw in place. Actually, I don't want this big one. I want the smaller one. And I am gonna put this little plastic nut on top just to hold it. Um, 
maybe necessary, maybe not, but we're going to do it anyway. All right, so I'm adding two nuts here to the front uh, just to kind of keep the angle on the board better. More consistent. We got a battery pad here. Do I want that? We'll see how it works. So there you go. Hopefully this was helpful. If you're looking for a review on this quad, I've got one of those, right? Uh, as I talk more about the Mo Beetle as both a whoop and a toothpick. So if that's what you're looking for, that wasn't this video. This video was hopefully to get you set up and uh, walk you through a little bit of the conversion. You know, take your time with the conversion. That is my suggestion. Uh, but yeah, I actually do prefer flying this thing as... Uh, as a toothpick, right? Um, it does really well as a whoop, but I kind of prefer my whoops to be a little bit more docile and not quite as aggressive. So that's why I'm keeping this thing as a toothpick. Uh, I like the aggressiveness outside with I, when I have a little bit more space and room to crash. And uh, being such a nice little small and light toothpick, this thing isn't gonna break on you like a lot of larger and heavier quads might. Plus you can fly this you know, I wouldn't say around people, but people aren't going to notice. It's not going to be super noisy and loud and draw a crowd where people come over and ask you questions. And what's that? And what are you flying? And that's never fun when you're under the goggles. So anyway, if you haven't already, make sure you check out our website, halfchrome.com. We've got all sorts of drone reviews on there. And uh, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Hopefully we'll see you back. Good luck, everyone. And happy flying. Enjoy some macro. It's not the greatest. I know. Right? I'm no pro. I'm just a guy having fun and making some videos along the way.